Okay, so now that we've talked about cylinders, let's talk about the other topic in this section, quadratic surfaces. Right? So you might remember back to, I think, your Algebra 1 days, probably the end of the class, you guys studied something called the quadratic equation, which was usually like ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. And you're trying to solve that. Well, we're kind of doing something like that here. What we're doing is we're going to solve a quadratic equation. Well, we're not going to solve, but we're going to graph all of the solutions to a quadratic equation. In other words, here's an equation. We're going to graph it. Right? That's really what it means. Right? So what is a quadratic equation in three variables? Well, we have to have all the degree 2 terms, all the degree 1 terms, and the degree 0, the constant term. So what does such a thing look like? Well, let's start with ax squared plus by squared plus cz squared. Right? So we have those type of degree 2 terms. I'm going to fix this y here. I'm not too pleased with the way it came out. There we go. Right? But then we have some more degree 2 terms as well. We have dxy, we have exz, and fyz. So now, now those are all the degree 2 terms, right? Now we have the degree 1 terms. There's only three of those. Uh, Gx plus Hy, uh, what's after H? I, Z. And now there's one more thing, the degree 0, plus J. Right? And all of this equals 0. So we want to graph that. So that's quite a large task, really, to ask, to graph something. If all of these coefficients were non-zero, it'd be kind of hard to find any answers to. And if you really had something like that, I think your best bet really would be to go to some kind of a mathematical software like Mathematica or MATLAB or Maple. Uh, Sage, I think, is another option. I think that's a free one, maybe. Don't quote me on that. Anyway, so there's all sorts of you know, math software like that you could go to to try and solve this. Um, what we're going to do here is play a little bit of mathematical trickery and move this to something a bit more standard. Right? So we can do rotations. So let's say a combination. ax squared plus by squared plus cz squared plus j equals zero. So that's one possibility. Right? If we're given a particular equation of this type up here, we might be able to turn it into that. If we can't turn it into that, the other option is this. <coughs> we could also turn it into ax squared plus by squared plus iz equals zero. That's the other possibility. So through rotations and translations, this up here can be turned into one of these or one of these. Okay. So let me say a little bit about how that happens or I should say, what kind of tricks you would have to use to do that. Um, maybe you'll go on to take a class called linear algebra. And this is really a linear algebra technique. You use that to kind of switch this. You can really easily talk about rotations and linear algebra and translations there as well. And you can see how this can get turned into one of these. Um, Okay, so now let's do an example of graphing a quadratic surface by hand. And one of the easiest ways to do that is using something called traces. So let's talk a little bit about what traces are and use them to graph this. Right? So what a trace is, right? so what this is is we set a variable uh, to a constant. 
So for example, this is something like x equals k, y equals k, or z equals k, right? And then we get a curve, right? Uh, so we set a variable equal to a constant, then get a curve, right? And that curve is called a trace, right? And that curve, well, it lives in one of these planes depending on which one you picked. So let's say, well, let's do for this example. Let's take the trace x equals zero, right? So this trace, the curve we're going to get is going to lie in the yz plane because that's what the plane x equals zero is, right? So if we plug x equals zero in up here, what do we get? We get y squared over 16 plus z squared over 4 equals 1, sorry, not 0, equals 1. All right, well, you might know that as an ellipse. Okay. Now let's do another trace. Uh, we're always going to pretty much need more than one trace to graph a quadratic surface. Usually about three will be a good sort of baseline. Sometimes you'll have to go more than three as well. But I think two is probably too little. Three might be a good sort of starting point. All right, so let's take this time the trace y equals zero. What is this? We plug y equals zero in up here. We get x squared plus z squared over four equals 1. Well, you might know that as also being an ellipse. Right? And where does that ellipse lie? In fact, let's start writing this up here. So x equals 0, this is the yz plane. y equals 0, what is that? It's the xz plane. And then let's do sort of the logical next one, which is z equals 0. What plane is that? Of course, that's the y, our xy plane. I think I almost said yx or something. Anyway, and what is the equation here? Well, it's x squared plus y squared over 16 equals 1. And of course, that's also an ellipse. All right, so let's make that look more like a 16 and less like a 10. All right, so we have these three traces here. So we have the intersection, it is another way to say this, of this surface with these three planes. So that's another way you can think of a trace, is it's the intersection of the surface with one of these planes. Okay, so how do we use this information? Well, really we just, we know where these three curves have to lie, so let's draw the three space, x, y, z axes, and graph it. So I might get a bit off, off screen here, but it's the way it goes. Okay, so let's start by drawing this uh, three space. All right, so here's x, y, and z, All right? Okay, so now let's start graphing these traces that we have. Well, let's start with this one, the x equals zero trace, because that's kind of the easy one to fit on here, right? That's in the y, z plane, and that's the plane of the board here. So let me make the, ah, oh, that's fine. So let's sketch that in here. Well, first, what is this ellipse? It goes to plus minus 4 in the y direction and plus minus 2 in the z. All right, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 here. Okay. Oops. For z, we have 1, 2, and 1, 2. 
And now, let's sketch in this ellipse. So it goes. like this. All right, but now we need to get the next one in here. So this is why one is not enough. This could be any number of things at this point. So let's get the second one in here, y equals zero. All right, so that's another ellipse that goes out to plus minus one in the x direction and plus minus two in the z. So let's get one and minus one. Right, so this is the xz plane, so that means we're going this way, and we'll use dotted for the back. Right, so you might, in this case, you might already be able to see the shape. Right, but let's go ahead and add on this last one, the z equals zero uh, trace. Right, so that's in the xy plane, and it goes plus minus one in the x and plus minus four in the y. So that looks something like this. So if you couldn't already tell from the last one, sure, hopefully you can tell from here, and this drawing hasn't just gotten too messy, that this should look sort of like a rugby ball now, right? kind of very roundish, right? but not quite a ball. All right. Another thing you could do, if you didn't do these types of traces, let's say we took various traces um, like this for various values of y. So that would give us various slices kind of this way. Okay? So what would we see? Let's say if we you know, moved y to be a negative number, we might see a trace that looks something like this here. Right? If we moved y to be a positive number, we might see a trace that looks something like that. Right? So there's a whole bunch of ways we can use traces to build this, whether we do you know, the three different ones like this. Sometimes that'll be enough, maybe not. Uh, maybe we build it like this. You know, there's a whole variety of ways to do it. Okay, so let's do one more example of graphing a quadratic surface, and this time we're going to use traces in one variable, like just taking different values of one variable. So if we look at this here, the y and the z are both squared, but the x isn't. So the x is sort of the special value here. So here we've already done some traces. So let's look at x equals 0. Well, then we get this equation 0 equals y squared plus 4z squared. Well, the only thing that can possibly solve that is the origin, which is a point. All right. What about x equals negative 1? Well, since y squared and 4z squared are both positive, then there's no way two positive things can add up to give a negative number. So there's no solution in this case. Right? And that's actually going to be true for any negative value of x. That will never be able to be solved. So in other words, what's that what that means is there's no part of the surface on sort of the negative side of the x-axis. All right, so now we know we just need to keep taking different uh, x values. Okay, so let's start with say x equals 1. Well, so when x equals 1, we plug that in, and I know this order is a little backwards here, but y squared plus 4z squared equals 1, and well, what that is is that's an ellipse, and in particular it's this one, y squared plus z squared over 1 half squared equals 1. And finally, let's take another uh, trace in the x direction, and let's make x even bigger. Let's say we make it 4. Right? Well, then we get 4 equals y squared plus 4z squared. Divide by 4 to get a 1 over here, sorry, a 1 over here, and we get y squared over 4 plus z squared equals 1. So what we see is that we start with a point when x is 0, and then as x gets larger and larger, it's a growing um, parabola, or sorry, ellipse. Sorry. All right, so the ellipse just keeps getting bigger and bigger. So it sort of starts out something like this. 
right? And then we get, when x equals 1, we get something maybe like this. And when x is 4, we get something, actually, fill that one in, like this. So I, I'm drawing them a little like that because of perspective. So we end up with, if we connect all of these, so you know we could of course find more in here if we really wanted to, we end up with this kind of elliptic shaped bowl. In other words, this is an example of an elliptic paraboloid. So, you notice I kind of sketched this picture with no axis. And actually, this looks kind of very conal. It look, looks very much like a cone. Let's sort of do this. Maybe I sketched this a bit too far apart. This shouldn't look too much like a cone. It shouldn't be very pointy, in other words. All right, so maybe something more like that's a little bit better. All right. Well, we know the x-axis should be going this way because the ellipses should be growing in that direction. All right. And then this thing here has to be the y-axis because that's the larger direction for the parabolas. And this one here needs to be the z. Well, the question is, you know, what's the positive and negative directions for this? Or what are the positive directions for each of these? And you can just use the right-hand rule, right? So if we use this, we say put our uh, fingers along the first one, curl towards the second, and then this, the thumb will point towards the third. So here it's coming out, which means it's down here. Right? 